OAI tutorial and review. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at PoAI and whether or not it is an amazing all-in-one tool or is this a tool that should be designated for one certain task. So let's jump right into PoAI. To get started, head on over to po.com and then click on continue with Google, Apple, or sign up with your email address. We're just going to proceed with Google over here for a quick and easy sign up on Po. Now, once we have signed on over here, we're just going to allow it to have some access to our basic information, including your name and your email. Now, once you have signed up on PO, this is what your dashboard is going to look like. Now, you can use PO with their desktop application if you want, and you can download their desktop application for both Windows as well as Mac OS. Now, on the left, you guys can see we have our general menu bar, and if you open this up, you have your Explore section. Then, within Explore, you will find different applications and different use cases. So if you want a general assistant, you have their assistant. If you want an app creator, you have app creator. You have OpenAI's 4.1, 4.0, Grok 4, O3.4, and many other AI models are available to you. Now you might say, hey, if these are other AI models that are available to me, why would I need to use Po? Well, the reason why you might use Po instead of having to use all of these AI models separately is because this provides you with an all-inclusive AI space. I don't have to create five to six different accounts and sign up and then separately work on my projects and build my logo on one app and then try to do my tasks on the other. This makes it easier for you to combine all of your AI spaces and AI tasks. So we have a bunch of things like apps, image generation, audio generation, text analysis, popular applications, featured video generation, learning, game bots, hobbies, and more. So we are going to proceed and I want to go back and we're going to explore some of the other features as well. And when you click on create on the top, you're going to complete your profile to continue. And we're just going to save this over here. Once you do that, you can create a specific bot. So you can create bots in a few different ways. You can create images by defining a visual style, video generation bots, canvas apps, server bots, role play bots, as well as prompt bots. Now I want to create a role play bot and the name of my role play bot is going to be Sally and the description. Now this is going to describe the functionalities to set people's expectation. They're a counseling bot. And then after that, I'm going to proceed with the base model. Now you will see there are several different base models you can select from, including their suggested model as well as different models that it thinks are going to be appropriate. I'm going to proceed with Cloud Tycoon 3. After that, you're going to define the character, which is the most important part of using Pose character building or bot building. Obviously, you're going to define how the AI bot is going to speak and interact with the user. So you need to be as specific as possible and you need to be as clear as possible as well. So you want to click on view best practices for prompt and you will see their best practices that are suggested. You guys can see here are some examples. Now from here, I'm going to just proceed. You are a counseling bot. You provide unconditional positive regard and support. You do not judge. You only support and understand. You do identify bad behavior, bad behavior, so on and so forth. Now, you can use markdowns uh, to get the bot to better comprehend more complicated instructions, such as rules or, you know, context if you want. Now, from here, I want to add something. You let's say with my particular counseling bot it always you suggest ways to improve users life now from here i can proceed and i can add a knowledge source as well and this is what you find in a lot of different tools where you can add the knowledge source this can be for company information especially if you're building bots for your website or for your company which need to have information about your business or about your company then you can add the knowledge sources over here and this provides you really customized bots let's say i want to give it in 
insight into certain personality types or certain techniques in therapy. So I can add those knowledge bases over here. Then I have a greeting message as well. So I'm not going to add a greeting message. We also have some advanced settings included suggested replies, custom temperature. Now custom temperature refers to how creative a bot can be. Higher values are going to create more unpredictable and more creative replies, whereas lower creativity or temperature values are going to give more consistent replies, which means that whatever instructions you've given it, it's going to be very uh, to the T when it comes to those instructions. From here, you can go into settings, you can make it publicly accessible, uh, you have related recommendation and more, and then just click on publish, continue without editing. So this particular bot name is not available. I'm going to go with 09090 and then click on publish. And once I do that, just like so, my bot has been published. So from here, I can go on ahead. You guys can see the rates for this as well, the available points, the standard first message, and the input bot message, chat history, and then chat discount. And people can subscribe to your bot just like so. Now, keep in mind that different models are going to be using different amounts of credit. So if you have, you know, your bot over here, this is our Haiku bot. If I use GPT-4, that's going to consume more credits than GPT-4. GPT-3, so you do have to keep that in mind. I'm going to chat with my counseling bot. Hi, I'm having a bad day. All my friends, friends are moving on in life and I'm still here doing nothing. So let's see what kind of suggestion it has. What kinds of things are you interested in and passionate about? We can help you feel more fulfilled. You can get ideas for hobbies, classes, volunteer work, so on and so forth. This is a really decent, you know, therapy-esque bot. It's not a therapy bot, it's like a counseling bot. Now, if I want to not use my own bot and I want to explore some of the bots other people have created, I can directly go into explore. I'm going to go into image generation and I'm going to scroll down and I want to go with this one over here, photo create E. So I want to create a beautiful woman with black hair and brown eyes wearing a emerald necklace and emerald studs. Now, just like so, it is going to take my prompt and create an image for me. We even have audio creation available. We have a bunch of different types of AI tools available all on Poe. And this makes it really easy for you to find the AI tool that you really need and for you to simplify your AI tasks as well. So this is a free image we have created. Now we can go with upscaling, animating, comparing, comparing with some of the other models and then repeating this as well. Now, just like so, I can even create text analysis. I can even proceed with proofreading, mind, creative writing, programming, hobbies, and much, much more. So is Poe AI truly a tool that you need? Personally, I do think it's a tool that all people should explore because it gives you the opportunity to have multiple different bots working for you all at once and to diversify your experience and work and you're able to accomplish more in less time because AI bots can simplify it for you. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.